And we are in the next unit, create validation rules. Learning objectives. After completing this unit, you will be able to describe two use cases for validation rules. Or list the elements of a validation rule. Create a validation rule. Introduction to validation rules. Validation rules verify that data entered by users and records meet the standard you specify before they can save it. A validation rule can contain a number of expressions that evaluate the data in one or more fields and returns a value of true or false. A validation rule can also include error messages to display to users when they enter invalid values based on specific criteria. Using these rules effectively contributes to quality data. For example, you can ensure that all phone numbers fields contain a specified format or that discounts applied to a certain product never exceed a defined percentage. Defining validation rules. You can create validation rules for objects, fields, campaign members, or case milestones. In these steps, we create a validation rule that fires when a user tries to save an account with an account number of incorrect length. Creating a validation rule. From setup, go to object measure and click account. Let's switch to split screen view here. All right, we're in the split screen view here. So let's go to validation rules. Click new. And in the following properties are for your validation rule. Our name, account number, eight characters. And we enter that here. So then is a length and the account number. Must be eight characters long. And there were no errors found with this syntax. So let's have a look here. I don't see the exclamation mark explained here. Equal is clear. The 8 is a character. Here is how validation rules error message can appear when a user types an incorrect account number format into a field. So let's have a look if that actually works. Phone number one, two, three, four. Let's try to save this. And we get an error. Examples of validation rules. Here are some validation rules example that you can try out yourself. Account number is numeric validation that the account number is numeric if not blank. Unfortunately, the like specific 
syntax and stuff is not explained, but I guess uh, if you really want to implement this in your projects, um, maybe there will be instructions later on and otherwise you can just, uh, I guess, Google it's It's somewhere. Date must be in the current year. Well, the date that the custom date field contains a date within the current year. Yeah, my date. This lesson is greater than year to date. Again, the stock syntax doesn't really make much sense to me, but uh, here it's an example. Valid number range validation validates that the range between the two custom fields, salary min, salary max, is no greater than $27,000. Okay, that's somewhat self explanatory. Website extension validates a custom field called website to ensure that, it, that its last four characters are in an explicit set of valid website extensions. And website, so this is like the custom field. So if you add a commenter and then the number it apparently refers to the last four characters. And I guess these greater than, less than, uh, whatever you call them in English. Anyway, these signs apparently are the content of what's in those last fields and it should match whatever is written here and if it doesn't then there will be an error a valid billing country validates that the billing country is valid is a valid iso 31662 ledger code Okay, let's go to the hands-on challenge. Create a validation rule to check that the contact is in the zip code of its account. To complete this challenge, add a validation rule which will block the saving of a new or updated contact if the contact is related to an account and has a mailing postal code uh, which has the API name mailing postal code different from the account's shipping postal code which has the API name shipping postal code
Actually, I think we should um, do this under contact. So validation mode. Neon. So my imposter called it as an account and does not match the associated account. Shipping postal code should return as a validation error and not be saved. So let me think about this a little and come back. So that was easier than expected. What I ended here is mailing postal codes and then the exclamation mark and then the equal sign account dot shipping postal code now um, here the shipping postal code is already there what I did here is just in their field account and then um, shipping postal zip postal code and then it's just in there it's here if you want to edit manually you just enter account dot so basically if the mailing postal code is not equal to account shipping postal code then the error message is contact zip code does not match account zip code uh, now i already had saved, saved this here and then i try this out so basically what i had to do here is firstly go to the account and edit and edit the code here because there was no zip code here the code is one two three four five and then i found my contact new home buyer firstly had to go to account name to assign the account there and um, then i entered the code just to see if there was actually an error if i created if i added the wrong zip code and indeed contact zip code does not match the account zip code so the error message is working and then i just tried it with a correct zip code 12345 which is the same one that i used on the account and that actually works so the challenge uh, is complete regarding this and now the second part of validation rule should only apply to contact records with an associated account contact records with no associated parent account can be added with any mailing postal code hint you can use this blank for this check okay that's what i still need to do so let's go back here edit this Now let's see, it's blank, we have that here somewhere. Let's do it in this type of format. Okay, now we need to figure out how to get this done. I guess account name.
Yeah, let me pause this real quick and figure something out.